Hi guys, last day of the unit, day 12, more parabola applications, we're gonna do three of them. Two of them are gonna be real life problems and one's gonna be just a math problem. So the first one we're gonna start with is a soccer goalie kicking a ball straight up in the air and then it coming back to the ground. It says she kicks it with an upward velocity of 65 feet per second. Her foot meets the ball a foot off the ground, but most importantly is this right here our equation we're going to put into y equals. So let's do that. Go to our calculator, y equals, clear out some stuff that we may have had. I'm going to leave that 0 into y2. We like that now. Negative 16x squared. Negative, that means it's going to be sad, and that makes sense because the ball should go up and then down. Plus 65x, don't forget your x, plus 1. Now our table is going to be time. So when we go to second graph, we're not necessarily going to do sweet spot. We're just going to say this. At time zero, the ball was one foot off the ground. Time one, 50 feet off the ground. Time two, 67 feet off the ground. Time three, 52 feet. Time four, five feet. And I'm not doing any more because negative 74, that means at five seconds it would be buried in the ground. So I'm going to stop there. And that's what I'm going to plot. And then I'm going to answer a few questions. So since I only have to go to not even much more than five seconds, time zero, I'm skipping a box, one second. Skip two, skip a box, three, four, and five seconds. How high do I have to get? Looks like I got to get up into the 60s. So I'm going to go every two boxes is 10. 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 feet. Beautiful. All right, let's plot them. At time zero, one, barely above zero. At time one, all the way up to 50. At time two, 67. Halfway would be 65, so a little bit bigger than 65. That's how high the ball gets. Time three is 52, a little bit bigger than 50. Time four is at five. And then it hits the ground just after that. Here's the path of the ball as she kicks it. Got it. So. I'm going to answer a couple questions off of this graph. Did we create our table? Check. Did we graph the function? Check. What's the maximum height? What's the highest the ball ever reached? If I looked on the graph, I would say it's somewhere in the 60s. If I looked on my table, I would say it's 67 feet high. When did this happen? At time two seconds. Two seconds after she kicked it, it reached its high point. That makes sense. Now I need to find when the ball was in the air for how long, or in other words, when did it reach the ground? We want that one. And we know how to find that. We go to our graphing calculator. And we're going to set up our window just like we did it on our graph. X goes from 0 to 5. Y goes from 0 to let's go 80 just like it did and if I hit graph whoops what did I do y equals plugged it in right windows 0 to 5 whoops sorry that should be a 0 here and an 80 here graph did it now I want to find that intersect so second 5 I'm going to move my spider down to when it hits the ground. Right there. Enter, enter, enter. 4.077. That second 7 is going to make the original 7 round up. So 4.08 seconds. A little bit more than 4 seconds after she kicks it, it hits the ground. Makes total sense to me. All right, next question this is not an application. It's just a regular math question, but I had to change something. The domain, as you can see, I changed it. So if I go to y equals, this is going to be one that I'm going to go back and center it around zoom six. X squared 
minus 6x minus 1. If I look at the equation, I know x squared is positive, so it's going to be happy. I'm going to leave 0 into y2. Second graph, there's my table. The sweet spot, it says, oh, gave you the domain. From negative 1, change the 6 to a 7. So I'm going to go negative 1, 6. 0, negative 1. 1, negative 6. 2, negative 9. 3, negative 10. 4, negative 9. 5, negative 6. 6, negative 1. And 7, 6. And I'll show you why I had to go one further in a minute. Let's plot all these. Negative 1, 6. Out the door, out the window. Pardon me, 1, up 6. 0, negative 1. Don't go over, just go down 1. Over 1, negative 6. 2, negative 9. 3, negative 10. Turning point, vertex. 4, negative 9. S negative 6. Negative 1. And 7, 6. Let's connect them. No arrows because we gave you the domain. And you could probably guess why we had to go that one extra value. Because when it says circle the roots, if I wouldn't have gone to 7, I wouldn't have been able to find those two roots. Now I'm going to hit zoom 6 to go back to nice and center window because my window is messed up from our other problem. Zoom 6. There it is. How do I find the roots? I'm going to guess 1 is really close to 0, but I'm going to find it exactly. Second, trace 5. Spider's right on top. Enter, enter, enter. Negative 0 0.16. That 2 is going to make it stay the same. Negative 0 0.16. Let's find the second one. Second, trace 5. Let's move our spider over. Enter, enter, enter. The second is 6.16. And like we said, the decimals are sometimes the same, sometimes they're a little different. Graphed it, found the table, plotted them, found the roots, used the calculator. Last question. Darien Lake's newest ride launches riders straight up and returns straight down in a model by the equation right here. So let's plug that baby in. This is going to be one we're going to have to set our window by hand. Negative 14 x squared plus 140 x. Clear out all that other stuff. Negative, one four, or negative 14 x squared plus 140 x. I love it. If I just hit graph. It's going to be way off the screen. We're going to have to figure it out in a minute. We're going to go to our table. And remember, this is real life. So therefore, when we do our second graph, we're going to start at zero. Negative 154 wouldn't make any sense. We're going to have to add a couple rows to our table this time. This is a big table. Zero, zero. One, 126. Two, 224. Man, two seconds after the ride starts, I'm 224 feet in the air. 294 at 3. 4 is 336. 5 is 350. Oh my gosh, I would never do this ride. 336, let's go 7. 294, let's go 8. 224, 9, 126. And what happens down at the bottom? Let's see. Why do I like 10? Because 10 seconds after the ride starts, I'm back on the ground. All right, we got to plot these. And we got to figure out what our scale is to make our x and y axis. x is going to be time. It goes to 10. I'm going to put a zero here. Every two boxes is a second. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I got to go all the way up. Where's our vertex? Right here. VTP. If we want to do that extra circle for axis of symmetry, we can. 
I've got to go all the way up to 350. I'm going to do it this way. Every two boxes is 50. So every one box is 25. So 50. Skip one, 100. Skip one, 150. Skip one, 200. Skip one, 250. Skip one, 300. Skip one, 350. Skip one, 400. That's enough. Fits perfectly. And just like in science, you want to use your whole grid. Where was I at time zero? I got on the ride. I'm scared to death at ground zero. One second after the ride starts, I'm already up 126 feet. 100 is that one. 125 is the next one. 126, a tiny bit above. At 2, I'm 224. 2, that line would be 225, so I'm going to put it right there. At 3, 294, just under 300. At 4, 336, which is bigger than 325, but smaller than 350. So it's going to be right there. Five seconds, I'm at the highest point of the ride, 350 feet exactly. Now I go back down, getting a little bit safer here, here, here. And finally, at time 10, safe back on the ground. Here's the ride. X-axis is time in seconds. Y-axis is feet above the ground. Sorry, I missed that 10 by a tiny bit. I'll make a big dot here to cover it up. There we go. All right, we can answer some questions. I can answer a lot of questions off this graph. Let's answer first. How long is it until the rider returns to the bottom? That would be right here, 10 seconds. When does the rider reach 224 feet? So let's go up to 224, somewhere around here. Now I could look across at the graph, or I could look for 224 in the Y column. Here and here. Why two times? Because once on the way up and once on the way down. So when did I reach 224 feet? After two seconds and eight seconds. And then I'm gonna add a, a, one last question, kind of make it interesting. What if I wanted to know 325 feet? You could estimate it. 325 feet is right here halfway between 300 and 350, here and here. You could say about four seconds and about six seconds just off that. Now we could use our calculator to find the intersection, but we don't really need to. All right, applications using our calculator, these quadratic or parabola applications, sometimes they have meaning, we can use these new keys. Great job, great unit. Um, have a good day, guys, and we'll see you soon.